right now on Higher Journeys with Alexis Brooks. I've crossed over a few spirits that are still here based on relationships from other lifetimes that other the other spirit has incarnated back here for another lifetime and they're still trying to hang around. The grief of losing a loved one and the sadness that emerges from the passing of an individual is hard enough. But imagine if that individual weren't fully crossed over. What if the spirit of that once physical being is literally stuck between two worlds? Barry Littleton, known for his excursions outside of the physical realm, including his multiple contact encounters with non-human intelligence, has also been very active in work that he says helps those trapped individuals make a full transition into the light. Barry says that more recently, he has encountered a huge jump in the number of earthbound spirits hovering close to this plane, not ready or willing to make a full transition. But is there a reason for this more recent escalation of trapped souls? Barry Littleton had some very interesting, though sobering, thoughts on the matter. Barry Littleton, I want to talk to you about something that you and I have talked about offline quite a bit, and that is this idea of individuals who have crossed over, personalities that have crossed over, that you feel in excess are hovering or earthbound, now earthbound spirits. I asked you just about, I don't know, a week or two ago in our last conversation, and uh, how long do you feel that this has been going on? And you feel that this is a relatively recent phenomenon. Guys, we're talking about, and we know, well, we know that there, there are deaths globally every day. We know that. And I'm not going to get into numbers, but let's just say even in with this backdrop that we have going on right now, God forbid, and these beautiful souls, for whatever reason, feeling themselves tethered to this planet. Barry Littleton, why do you feel this is happening more now? I want you to talk a little bit about this. But you know what, before you even answer that question, Give the audience, because I think there's a, a, a large part of the audience that is not aware of the fact that in addition to the great work that you do into the ET contact phenomenon, as well as being an experiencer, that you are also involved in, let's just say, uh, you have a proclivity for psychic ability and have worked with people in that regard. First, tell us a little bit about that and then go into uh, your thoughts about earthbound spirits right now. You know, kind of relegating that to that this topic at hand, for me, I think what happened to so many, it happens to a lot of, what happened to me happens to a lot of young people that have not just a clairvoyant ability, but the mediumship ability. You know, every medium is a clairvoyant, but every clairvoyant, clairvoyant is not a medium. So there's a little difference in the gifts. And if something like what happened to me was I was attacked by an earthbound spirit when I was seven years old in a house that my uncle had re rent, uh, was renting. And when this happened, it was, first of all, it was a type of an assault, you know, and it was um, very uncomfortable. And a lot of these earthbound spirits, because sometimes you have people that are like that, they're either molesters or have some type of a really negative pattern, behavior pattern, where they're in the human body. And then they cross, they, they die, their body dies, they don't cross over and they seem to become something even worse. And I think that's what I experienced there. And that people that are, have that either clairvoyant or mediumship ability is like a lighthouse in that darkness to those those earthbound spirits. And then they either try to attach. If they can't attach, they'll hate and they'll try to project things into your mind. Fear, violence, things of that nature. So that helps you. That helps to kind of restrict the people that have gifts from ever using them. It'll scare you half to death. It'll make you make you want the ability to go away especially because our society doesn't openly train people how to deal with these abilities. We instead, we act like it doesn't exist. So that's the first part as concerning psychic abilities and mediumship concerning earthbound spirits that I had to deal with. And that was as a child. So I think that happens to a lot of people and it's something to be aware of. Okay. It is something to be aware of. And you're right. Society, not only do we not give due attention to these sorts of things, uh, there's still, you know, a major giggle factor when it comes to the validity of this, these things. And I say, we do not have time for that 
for all the people, what, whatever the phenomena is, whatever the, the scenario is, whether it is contact with non-human intelligence, of which we both agree there may be millions of people uh, globally having contact on a regular basis, and it's still not considered a valid phenomenon because it's not understood. Same goes for, we're talking broadly about this idea of survival of consciousness, the survival of consciousness idea, uh, life after death. Uh, sure, life after death, consciousness continues, but if that consciousness is, uh, in effect, stuck here uh, or hovering close to the planet, uh, there's a problem. And, you uh, know, this and is something, Alexis, is how easy that happens for someone to get stuck here. So in that way, it's not just a recent phenomenon. It's been going on a long time because I've crossed over a few spirits that are still here based on relationships from other lifetimes that other the other spirit has incarnated back here for another lifetime and they're still trying to hang around. So it's, uh, you know, that type of a deal. And so the major things would be substance abuse. That's a big one that keeps people here. Attachment to property, attachment to certain loved ones, uh, behavior patterns that they just can't shake. These are major things that keep people trapped here. Another one is the fear of hell. It will make some retreat from what that light is that comes at death. We hear all these things, oh, the false light and all this and that, and such and such said, don't go into the light, yada, yada. Now, that's bad advice. And I base that on all of the people I've worked with now. That is bad advice. All the spirits, earthbound spirits I've crossed over, that's bad advice in terms of when the light comes at the very beginning of your death process, when the death process wants your life memories, that's part of what death takes from us, all right, is that you have the chance to actually go with the light. And if you have the discernment between light, like I know the light of the warm light of the sun, the life-giving light, compared to the light I feel from the moon. So when you're in that out of body situation, you're much more heightened awareness than you would think and people give credit for. So your discernment is high. You know, like for example, when I died and experienced my loved ones that had actually, we just buried him a few days before I had my accident. Uh, him and my grandmother, I can say they weren't just projections and they weren't somebody masquerading as them based on it felt like them. I could feel them as energy, as spirits, even though it's, it was physical, like talking to you, at least I thought it was, you know, but it was uh, that kind of that corridor between the death process, but that's another subject. Anyway, I just want to just make it clear of how easy it is for people to get stuck here and then not go into the light or run from it because they think it's judgment. Several of the spirits have told me that that light came and I got away from it, you know, and it finally went away. And then they can't feel the love and you start lack of love is another thing. And if you can increase the love that some of these earthbound spirits have and their awareness of it, suddenly they start seeing other beings in the room, being angelics, loved ones and things that will help them cross over. So this is another problem that, you know, what I found too, like some of the places that a lot of these earthbound spirits would join with people was in the hospital. Mm. Because you have how many people have a sudden death in the hospital and they become discombobulated for whatever reason? You know, I had, um, okay, just example. We'll just, we'll just go here. It's taking us down the rabbit hole, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, last, the last earthbound spirit I had crossed over, it was a female and she had attached to the client uh, at the hospital. And she said there were several people in there. There was a bunch, bunch of us in there. There were always a bunch of us around, but... Uh, I was the only one that could join with them. And when she says this, uh, after time I ask, well, how many how many were in there trying to join? And the, the number they gave me was, there was about in somewhere between thirty five and fifty of us. But only I could only I could 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 join and was strong enough to jump on. And when you start going to that factor, I want to say something else. This is, I may have mentioned this in our last show, is that um, a lot of these spirits have told me that they joined with the person in the incubator room when they were babies. So that means these are earthbound spirits that have been with this person for their whole life. They may, may be in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and it's a part of their personality they think is them. And it's not, it's just earthbound spirit. You know, and that I think that's a very common too, and somewhat terrifying because as a society, we're not even addressing that we need to energetically 
protect our youth when they're born energetically that the immune system is like or the aura is like the immune system towards these earthbound spirits and entities that are negative than that more negative and we're just talking now about the earthbound spirit people like you and i that don't cross over earth normal people okay we're not talking about the demonic we're not even going that that deep and this occurs like everything else on this planet there's layers of all this and this is the layer of those of us that don't cross over for various reasons and beliefs and ideas that we get behavior patterns before crossing over and from a mediumship aspect i'll say this at first it was very disconcerting to me because i can detect earthbound spirits or ghosts whatever you want to call them spirits that are attached to people on the outside of their energy field like a grandparent a parent a brother a sister they'll come through and when they step forward they'll give me some type of survival evidence before i communicate it to the client that's different these are not visible outside detectable outside because they're entwined in the person's behavior patterns something about the personality doesn't die during the death process the physical body might but something about the personality and the behavior patterns do not you know especially those that are ingrained a whole lot it's like an entrainment of the brain, you know. <laughs> anyway, so that's just something I wanted to say. So you may not be able to detect it despite how gifted you are on the outside of the client. And these are things that would come forward when I would get a client into hypnosis, like down past theta. You know, suddenly there's a way to find out if there are earthbound spirits with this person, how many of them are there, and then they'll start communicating. But they're often not aware, you know, that they're being they're not expected to be found and discovered. And that was just disconcerting, all right? But then when it changes the client's life and you see it later on in weeks going on, how some of these behavior patterns, they say, my, 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 my goodness, that wasn't even my stuff. That wasn't me, that was them. I'm a little bit confused in terms of when you say your client, who is the client? The person that's coming to you that's wanting to make contact with someone that's crossed over or the crossed over individual themselves? Uh, I can honestly say both, but in this case, I'm referring to the client that has come to me. The person has come to me for the service, you know, and that may be the problem that is in their life that's interfering with their life. But I mean, the physical person themselves, you know, it's very interesting because oftentimes what helps us when dealing with trauma, it's mostly trauma that will keep people here too and keep earth people here. And the trauma being joined with one of these earthbound spirits, changing your behavior, behavior patterns and destroying your life is serious. So in that way, cognitive behavioral, may I say, works on the earthbound spirit as much as it does earthbound people, or mm -hmm. uh, living people, excuse me. That's and that uh, is something coming from that field, psychology wise, I was somewhat unprepared for, for. you know, it's just, it's shocking a bit. You know, I had a gentleman that very religious the other day that I worked with for years professionally, great therapist, but he's very, devote into the Christian religion. No, no, nothing to those that are religious. I just perfectly personally don't have one, but I don't judge those that do. And he calls himself a Christian quite a bit and he's uh, devoted. And he told me something. He says, my wife has been on hospice for a while. And before that, she was helping people cross over. And he says, I got to tell you, Barry, I think that I know a lot of people that call themselves Christians, only 2% go into the light. And he said that it just shocked me a bit. That's worse than what. Now, how does he know that, though, Barry? He just based that on who his wife had worked with before she went into. Um, right. But how is he determining who is going into the light and who isn't? How, what his, what I is guess his it's the ones he's dealt with, the ones he's seen stuck here. That's all I can say. I mean, I've not dealt with his deal at all. For myself, I can say that I am often stunned by the numerous amount that one person can have of earthbound spirits attached to them and entwined in their personality. Sometimes so, it's not just one or two, sometimes mm -hmm. it's three, four, five, six, seven. And at least, you know, even, even, even the client themselves going, oh my God, that was like real. It's a very odd phenomenon, but something that is not addressed, I think enough in any of our circles. Here's what I want to try to understand, because you're bringing a, th this is it, this is complex. And I have to admit, I'm a little I'm not confused about the, the idea, what you're saying, that you, through your work, have determined that there are a lot of earthbound spirits more than there needs to be. 
but I'm just trying to understand the entry point or the means by which you're determining this. So you have a scenario would be a client, a physical client will come to you and say, Barry, I'm feeling some uh, unsettled in some way. I'm feeling like there is something heavy that's going on that I can't explain. And then she, he or she will come to you and you will then determine that what they're being bombarded with are actual physical personalities who are no longer physical that are attached to the individual. This is one common scenario. Well, is that here's, here's what it is. It's the behavior patterns themselves that they describe that are hurting their life or the trauma itself that is hurting them and causing some problems. So from then, it's a matter of isolating, is this being caused by an earthbound spirit? Or by the there's, person there's themselves. Certain, yeah, there's certain certain things that will happen, you know, that uh, influence a person's life rather suddenly after they've been somewhere that changes them. And that's kind of one of the leading factors. But then, you know, you got to be careful because when you're actually doing a session like that, they'll often know that you're coming if you're not careful. You know, you, you got to the, the, the earthbound spirit will know the earthbound mm -hmm, spirit. Will mm -hmm. know. Okay. Now, some of us are like beacons to them. They can see, and, you know, each one of them that I've dealt with so far. I mean, every one of them has said the same thing to me. When I say this, the earthbound spirits have said it's dark here. It's dark here. And no matter what it was that seemed to have them stay, how negative, how traumatic it was. It's always the same thing. It's dark here. Sometimes there's several of us here, you know, can't get out of here. And that leads them to even communicating to someone like me, well, there's no such thing as God. Don't use that word because if there was God, I wouldn't be stuck here. Food for thought. This is obviously very controversial, guys. Does, 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 does that help what I, how I just explained that? Yeah, that? It does. It does. But I think it's, it's not a clear cut situation because there are just so many different scenarios by which you're, you have made the discovery that there is an excess an excess of non-physical human, once human beings that are here that should not be here. You mentioned to me, and I don't believe it's any accident, that you've seen, let's call it even a glut of the, the, these individuals since the beginning of the pandemic, as an example. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, roughly the same time frame. not saying there's a connection, but roughly the same time frame. You also mentioned, I mean, there's just so many, there, there are a lot of moving parts to this for sure. Yeah. You also and mentioned, you also mentioned the fact that uh, what will often lead an individual who has crossed over to not go into the light is they're being tethered to earthly habits like addiction, a physical location, mental health issues, et cetera. Look at what has gone up exponentially, Barry, in the last two years. Look at the level of suicides that have taken place in the last two years, up exponentially. No accident. You know, you know that that's true. And you know, it's interesting. And this is coming from all around perspective. And I can only speak what I personally have experienced. On an earthbound spirit that's on the outside of the energy field of a person, uh, the ones that have done the suicide, oftentimes they won't come forward. They don't want to give survival evidence. They don't want to give anything. They don't want to really communicate. There's either an embarrassment or a guilt that goes along with it. And I noticed that's just normally they won't come forward. It takes a lot more to get them to come forward to cross over. So that's only my experience only, but that's not even the people that are entwined. I'm talking about the ones that are outside of the energy field. You know, there's all, all types down here. And then you've got other situations that come up that somebody may be having these behavior patterns it could be a mental issue. It could be environmentally inflicted. It doesn't mean it's an earthbound spirit. It doesn't mean it's a demon. You know, it's it's not always that. But sometimes this is a, definitely a factor more than what we're aware of. And it's really hard if you're dealing with some spirits that are talking about obsessions from past lives and they're, they're still here. And then they're talking about this other person reincarnated and they look like they did last time. And then they're still hating around this person, trying to and attaching the people that are near them. You know that 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 that, 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 that could be that could be a problem when our society doesn't even believe in past lives anyway. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> just no. saying, yeah, just saying. What percentage of the population 
Barry, do you feel, and I know this is difficult, there's no way you can come up with a hard number, but what area of percentage of people living here now have some form of attachment from those that are hovering close? What percentage of the living population do you feel have attachments? Mm, wow, that's a heavy question. Honestly, 65, 70%. And often I hear people talking about protection and they've got all these little cool new age things they're saying and they've got all the right words, but they've got stuff on them. You can see it. Then they're working on people and giving it to them. What do you mean? It's, Explain that. Stuff on well, them how? Well, well if, if you're somebody that doesn't really know how to protect yourself and you don't realize that a lot of times these dark forces come to us that know how to protect ourselves. They come to us by creating a bunch of stresses on our shields environmentally through our loved ones, through our uh, finances, our employment. They have all these ways of straining our shields. And what that does, does is creates in the protected person just a few little cracks. And once you have the cracks, they can infiltrate and go directly. You know what they do? Once they inf infiltrate just in one of those little cracks, they go directly for the heart chakra. That's what they always do. Makes through the sense. loved ones, through some way to get you and bring you down and drain you and wipe out your energy. That's what happens a lot. And I see a lot of people that are claiming to be healers and practicers. I'm going to criticize anyone in particular, but I've just seen it. And they've got these attachments on them and they've got these traumas they've not healed. And these things start living in our organs too. Just the trauma itself lives in our organs. That's scientifically proved. So if we don't exercise that and find ways to clear it and protect ourselves, we don't have busy business trying to tell somebody else to do that or showing them or working on them energetically when our energy field is tainted. <laughs> right. It's like, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, you know, the, never mind, forget it. <laughs> is that, I mean, I, I, I just say that because I just see it as a problem right now. And, it goes part of, I think, what you and my friend Robin McClendon were talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, which is this type of a blanket negativity that is holding, trying to hold the planet down right now, especially in the circles of ufology, new age. There's all these divisions starting to be created and a bunch of ego coming in. And all that is to stop people from really seeking the truth. Some things that I think are, well, I'll just throw this out here, and I'm taking more interest in trying to listen to people that say they're SSP and they have these memories. I think that's a part of it. And I start talking to some of them that seem somewhat credible. What do they start telling me the first thing? Well, I had a grandfather or a grandparent that was into the demonic, into the satanic thing. And it seems like these things started coming to me because these are gifted people, you know, and it's passed on lineage-wise, these negative entities. And this is going, yes, beyond earthbound spirit. I'm sorry. But I think these are things that need to be really addressed. Well, they're all and how, how, how would you How would you keep down a population that's having contact like you have, like I had? And I, I, I can't say everything for you, Alexis, but my contact was positive. It was not demonic. It was not satanic. It was no sexual connotation. None of that stuff that it does, gets the media hype right now. Right. No reptilians, no grays. So it's boring, probably, what I'm talking about. But in reality, there's a lot of people like me that didn't have that. And that needs to be acknowledged as much as the people that have been traumatized. And it's time for us all to start coming together and figuring out how this, this net that we incarnate through here not just wipes us of our soul life memories. If you believe we're immortal soul or souls, for whatever reason, we incarnate here mostly devoid of soul life memories. Another issue. Chance for life, yes. But it's like... You're in the 12th grade, but you can't remember kindergarten through 11th? What is that? Anyway. All right. Okay, gotcha. Listen, Barry, we're going we're gonna to wind this down. I think I, I would love to have you back. This is a short segment. I'd love to have you back and talk about some of the, th the proactive things that individuals who feel themselves to, to be uh, in this category of, of having some sort of infiltration going on in their lives, let's just say uh, broadly what they can do, barring all of the other things that are prohibitive or, or prohibiting them, like some of the things that you mentioned, what can they do to protect themselves? 
be above and beyond what we've heard in parts of the new age community. And I think a lot of it, I'm going to answer part of that question right now. A lot of it has to do with what's felt, not what's, you know, not the modality as much as the intention. So when we have you back, we're going to talk about that. Thank you for opening that conversation. We're going to be talking about this more journey years in 2022. So stay tuned. It's all connected. It's all connected. Right, Barry Littleton? Oh, yeah. If I, probably, if I didn't talk, talk you out there and go way too far. But yes, <laughs> you thank, thank you for the conversation. It's always a killer conversation with you. Thank you. I for love that. it. Thank you. Thank you, journey years. We'll talk to you real soon.